The next case involves a patient who experienced an acute myocardial infarction two months ago. The patient is 75 years old and arrived at the emergency room with dyspnea and crackles on auscultation, accompanied by a third heart sound, or B3. Blood tests were performed to assess cardiac enzymes, which came back negative. An electrocardiogram was also conducted. The current ECG appears unchanged compared to the one taken a month ago, meaning the patient had a heart attack two months ago, underwent an ECG a month ago, and has now arrived at the emergency room with shortness of breath and signs of pulmonary congestion. We repeated the ECG, and the results were similar to those from a month ago. So, what is happening? Let's take a closer look at the ECG. I recommend pausing the video to analyze it before we begin the discussion. In the electrocardiogram we are analyzing, we can see the patient maintains a sinus rhythm with a first-degree atrioventricular block, meaning a PR interval above 200 milliseconds. Examining the QRS complexes, we observe a wide Q wave from V1 to V3, lasting more than 40 milliseconds, suggesting necrosis in the anteroseptal region. There is also a change in ventricular repolarization, with ST segment elevation from V2 to V4 and inverted T waves in V5, V6, and other leads. A subtle Q wave in V1, mainly in AVL, indicates necrosis in the lateral wall as well, signifying anterolateral necrosis. If this ECG were seen for the first time, it could be compatible with an evolving acute myocardial infarction in the anterolateral wall for at least six hours. However, we know the ECG from a month ago was identical. So what could be happening? We know the patient has anterolateral wall necrosis, and this change, particularly the ST segment elevation, has persisted. This is characteristic of patients with extensive anterior wall myocardial infarction who develop left ventricular aneurysms. These patients often have permanent ST segment elevation, mainly in the anterior wall, which can be a confounding factor for an acute myocardial infarction. It is often recommended that patients carry a copy of their previous ECG for comparison, as any emergency department could misinterpret the presentation as a new acute myocardial infarction and send the patient for primary angioplasty or thrombolysis. It is also worth noting that this ECG shows significant signs of left ventricular hypertrophy. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. Please share this video with your colleagues, subscribe to our channel, and give us a positive evaluation. We hope to see you soon in our next video.